Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. In this video, we're going to show you the best controller and camera settings that you need to use if you're looking to maximize your success in FIFA 23 this year. If you want to show your support, please hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notifications bell so that you know exactly when new videos are released. So let's get right into it, starting with the camera settings. Starting with the EA Sports Game Cam, which is also the default camera. This camera is static, meaning that the ball moves up the field. The camera only tilts and turns towards where the action is, rather than keeping pace with the play on the sideline. For us, whilst this camera looks really, really cool and gives great visuals, we don't think it's a great camera to use, especially in competitive game modes, such as foot champs and division rivals. Next up is the broadcast camera. This is very much the same as the EA Sports game cam and it's exactly like how we watch football on TV. The camera only tilts towards where the action is being played. Again, it gives really realistic vibes, but it's not really great for playing games in our opinion. Then we have the pro camera, which is exactly like if you were playing the game yourself. So it gives you that realistic visualization. Having to make decisions and plays from a player's perspective, something that's really great if you're playing pro clubs or your pro club career in career mode, something like that. However, those that are playing foot, this camera is pretty useless and something you wouldn't use as you need to be able to see the whole field when you're attacking and when you're defending, which this view does not give you. Now we have the end-to-end -end camera. In our opinion, this is the worst camera setting because you can't think of any situation where this camera is actually useful other than for replays. So for us, we recommend never using this camera setting. Next up is the dynamic camera setting. This is a very similar to the default camera setting. It's just much more zoomed in, even when you have it on zero zoom. This is something that can be really cool if you want to feel close to the action and have that close feeling. However, because most of the field is obscured, It'll make defending really, really hard because you're not able to see the whole field. So if there's a runner in behind, you can't see it. So this is not a setting we would recommend. Then we have the classic camera setting, which is again, pretty much the same as the default and the EA Sports game cam. Again, it's not really something that we recommend. We think it's okay, but it's not really one that we like personally. So now we move into what is one of the most popular camera settings and that is the co-op camera. This is one of the most popular camera settings, especially it's very popular amongst professional players and it's easy to see why it gives a full view of the field, especially when you have it on 20 height and zero zoom. You're able to see all of the players on the pitch, which makes defending very, very easy because you're not surprised by any runners in behind that you can't see. You can see everything. It also makes attacking really easy because you can see everything at any point in time. However, for us, it's not our preferred choice because we feel it's a little bit too far away and a bit disconnected. It gives us that disconnected feel from the game. Even when we do fiddle around the height and zoom, we can't really get one that we like. So whilst it's one of the best settings in the game and we don't want to knock it, it's just not one that we personally like to use. We then move into the last two, which are telly and telly broadcast. Now, starting with telly, this gives us the same view as broadcast, only this camera follows the action down the line rather than tilting. We do really like this setting, but our preferred and personal favorite is the telly broadcast. This combines all the things that we like with visuals, from the broadcast position which is a little bit higher up than the tele camera and to make this setting even better we do like to go with the camera height on 20 and then the zoom on zero this just gives us a better feel and it just gives us everything that we like it gives us that perfect vantage point that we really really like from the tele broadcast position but we're also able to see the whole of the pitch without having that disconnected feel of the co-op camera setting. Now, one last thing to note is how different stadiums have different vantage points and can affect the camera positioning. So for instance, Stamford Bridge, the camera is a lot lower down in the gantry, so it'll have a different feel even when you are using telebroadcast on 20 height and zero zoom. Compared to a stadium like the Bernabeu, which has a higher vantage point, we do like to use the Bernabeu, Anfield or the Parc de Prince, as these are our preferred stadiums that give us the best angle for the telebroadcast and it just gives us that better feel and that better look. But it is be mindful that some stadiums do have different vantage points which can affect the camera positioning. So before we continue into the controller settings, if you are enjoying the content, make sure you do smash the like. It does really help us out a lot. And let us know down in the comment section if there are any other videos you'd like us to cover and we'll do our best to cover as many of them as you suggest. But let's get back into the camera and controller settings next. So moving on into the controller settings. Now the competitive master switch is on when you play online game modes such as rivals and champs. So it is best to leave this on for all game modes that you use this setting. 
The through pass assistance, we like to keep it on semi as it's best to have a little bit of input when you are loading passes. When you're on manual, you'll find a lot of errors do occur and for the best experience, we do suggest keeping it on semi. The FIFA trainer, we suggest turning it off unless you're someone who is completely brand new to FIFA and just wants to learn the game. But anyone who has a little bit of experience or is advanced, we do recommend switching it off just so it's a little bit less distracting when you are playing. In terms of time finishing, this is where you double press the shoot button to get a timed finish, which does mean more accuracy and more chance to score. However, this does some take some mastering and we will have a tutorial out on this very, very soon on how to master timed finishing. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But for now, we suggest just keeping it on and trying to learn because this will result in more success when scoring. The next player switch indicator is where there's a little gray icon above the nearest player to show that that is who you're going to change next to if you were to press the L1 button at that given moment in time. So more than anything, this is just a visual thing, so we prefer to turn this off. The pass block assistance is where the AI will try to intercept the ball, and if it thinks it can do so effectively, it will do. So we definitely like this, and we definitely think this is something that is a big part of the game and that you do want to exploit, so we do want to have this setting turned on. In terms of auto switching, this is where the AI will switch for you in the various given scenarios as you can see on the screen. We personally like to just run on air balls which is basically for crossing only. This is because the ball travels a bigger distance which can make it a little bit harder to switch across the field unless you have the adaptive switching on which we will get to in a little bit. But we do like to have the air balls on. If you feel a little bit uncomfortable with that setting, you can have air balls and loose balls. This is also a great setting if you want the uh, loose ball setting done for you. Next up, we have the auto switch move assistance. Now, this is when you switch a player, you immediately are controlling him from the moment you select him. So the minute the player switches, you're controlling him. So any input will move that player instantly. So we personally like that. We like to have that instant control rather than have a little bit of that delay, which you will get if you have it on low, for example, then the game will continue running on the path that the AI was running or that you were pressing the directional stick before then you change and obviously have the time to react in real life. So we personally prefer it on, on, on none because we just like to have that instantaneous control. But if you want a little bit of time to react, then we do suggest having it on low. In terms of the clearance assistance, this allows you to clear the ball away from dangerous areas. For us, we like directional as it gives us our input a chance to work. Rather than just pressing the clear button and it just going anywhere, we have precision on where we clear the ball rather than it just going in any direction if we clear it up to our striker. But we might precision want to clear it up to our forward because he's in space, maybe on the right wing. Now, player lock and icon switching are two things that we don't use. We don't think they're very useful at all. So we just leave them off and we don't suggest you using them either. Right stick switching, this is really, really crucial and it's something that a lot of people have trouble mastering because it does take some practice to become good at. Uh, but we do really suggest the new adaptive switching. We think this is really, really useful. This is where you hold the right stick for longer and instead of having to just flick it up and up and up to get to the other side of the pitch, you can just hold it and it will switch to the other side of the pitch when anybody plays those swoops, those switching through ball so we do recommend having it on adaptive in terms of the switching preference we do like to have it on player relative which just means that with your right stick the player is the center of your right stick so if, if the, you want to switch up all you have to do is flick up on your uh, right stick and it will flick in that direction so we recommend using that ahead of ball relative in terms of ground and shot assistance we recommend having these both on assisted because if you have this on manual or semi it can make just doing the basic things really frustrating such as a simple pass or a simple shot so we recommend keeping these on assisted in terms of crossing we like to have this on semi so that we have more input on where the ball goes rather than it just going into a fixed point or onto a fixed player we have a little bit more accuracy the lob pass and the through pass assist Assistance, we like to have these both on semi as well much like the cross assistance so that we have a little bit more uh, input on where the ball goes rather than it just going to a specific player or for playing a lob through ball it we want it to go in front of the player rather than just straight at the player or where the player has ran from we want it to go in front of him so we need it on semi to do that if you feel even more confident you can have it on manual but for now we're going to have it on semi and we may update this in the future in terms of save assistance, this is for pro clubs only, so we want to just leave this on assisted. And in terms of the analog sprint, we want to leave this on because this means that when you press the sprint button, how far down you press the sprint button will dictate how much they're sprinting. So if you're pressing it 50% down, your player will initiate a 50% sprint. When you have this turned off, 
what this means is that your player will sprint instantly at the slightest touch so we want to have this setting turned on and then the last three settings the pass receiver lock user vibration feedback and trigger effect we don't like using any of these so we recommend just having these two late classic and off so that is it for the best camera settings and the best controller settings in FIFA 23 that we think are the best ones that will benefit you the most make sure you see a massive result in your FIFA gameplay. So if we are to change these and find more effective settings throughout the year, we do suggest doing an updated video and that is something that we will do. If you do wanna see us do more videos like this one, we do need your support. So make sure you smash the like button, subscribe and turn on the notifications bell. Also make sure you go and follow our TikTok and Discord if you wanna ask us any questions or see any more content make sure you go and follow our TikTok or Twitter. All the links to all of those socials will be down in the description below. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.